Hi, welcome back to Kolsky RC. So today we are going to review the Hubs and Zeno 2. Uh, I've already had a flight video up, you'll have seen, and I've done a video comparison between the Mavic, sorry, the DJI Mini 2 and this. And I put that up a couple of days ago and it seems to be quite popular. People have, to the vast majority of people, they've agreed that the Mini looks better, apart from a couple of people who obviously some fans because it's clear as night as day, night is day and night and day that they are different and the mini looks better however i'm going to do the review which i wasn't going to bother doing so why do i own one of these well i can tell you i've never paid full price for this thing never in a million years today as we stand these are coming in around 370 it depends it's up and down like you have seen it 420 this is for this kit it's got two batteries and the bag and the charger and all the usual crap so I bought this brand spanking new, never been flown, never had the batteries charged for less than half of the 370. Okay, because this was faulty. So out of the box, Hubson oh, delivered this. You can't blame who it came from. I'll tell you who it came from. It came from Gearbest, but they didn't manufacture it. They sent it out, but the guy couldn't get anywhere with Gearbest. They wouldn't do an exchange or they wanted to charge him to send it back to China. He lost all interest in it. He'd had it far too long by this point. And he decided to put it onto Facebook Marketplace. We agreed a fee, which was a lot less than he wanted, unfortunately for him. But at the end of the day, I bought this cheap. And that's about, well, I think it's probably worth maybe a bit more. So this controller is one of the worst things about this drone. Well, it's the worst thing about the drone, let's be fair. So the controller went faulty because you can connect the drone to the controller, it will bind, it gives you the right, all the lights come on, but when you connect the cable to your phone, the LIAS board inside here doesn't recognise that you've plugged the phone in. Doesn't recognise it's got anything plugged in. Well, that's a bit of a lie because it understands when I've unplugged it. So I stripped it in bits and on the board at the back of here, you have a... USB port which has been soldered on to the board directly onto the board with no surround around it so if you strip something down and you see a USB port there's a good chance it's going to have a plastic case around it or a bit of metal around it attaching it to the board in different places to make it stronger this has got nothing so here's your big problem do not cut the barbs off the wire that you plug into here and a lot of, I've seen loads of videos of people telling you to do it. It's what you did with the hubs and one to make it make a better connection. Them barbs are on there to stop you pushing that cable in too far because they know damn well that this will break off. The guy that owned it before tells me that he's tried other cables and I'm wondering if he's tried another cable first because it can clearly see it's been pushed off the board. If you push the cable in too far, it will push that off the board and break the contact. I tried soldering it back on. I can get it to half work. I can get it connected every now and then. But in the end, I managed to get all of one of these cheap, so I replaced it. So, if you have cut the barbs off and you've had no issues, well, good luck. It's fine. But if you do, if you you could have a problem one day. Certainly, if you go buy a cable off Amazon, make sure you don't buy one with. You can get the different lens. You have to look at the pictures because not all of these micro USBs are manufactured the same way, and there are different lengths. Some of them. So, have a look at that. Anyway. That's scrap. So in the bag you get a Hubson Zeno, another controller, and in my case I got a charger and two batteries with it. So the first thing when you feel when you when you notice when you pick one of these things up is why the hell is it so heavy? I think it's just over I can't remember. Bear with me. I shall wait, I'll be back in one second. There you go, on the scale, 955 grams. The battery, which is a 4S 3800 with 335 grams. So, heavy in itself. So the battery weighs far too much. With modern technology there's no need to wear that and the drone itself without the battery is still coming in ridiculously he heavy take the battery out 625 grams so i've got a seven inch um 
quads that you're going to see, an FPV quad that you're going to see, which has got the DJI FPV system in it. I've got a GoPro 8 on the top of it, and I'm flying that with a 3600 6S battery, and it's coming in at 910 grams. So, and that thing's made out of carbon fibre, and obviously bits and bats. There's a lot more weight, you should expect, on that than this. So why and how they've got that weight, I do not know. But it's one of the first things you know, if you're in the UK, that's going to make a difference to you after the 1st of January, because obviously it's going to be over the 900 gram threshold. And if you don't really understand what that is, I suggest you go look on the internet and find out about it, because it's going to make a difference to you if you own one of these. So, folding it out, it folds the same way as Zeno. It looks everywhere as is a Zeno 1. As you can see, it even has the same props as the Xeno one. The motors are similar, but they obviously aren't the same because this thing's running on 4S now instead of 3. And the camera looks to all intents and purposes to be the same, but obviously it is different. But apart from that, it looks pretty much the same. Still got no sensors on the front of anything. You have downward sensors now. You have downward sensors. And they make probably bugger all difference to the way it hovers. So this thing's still got the same problem of a Hubson, I call it a Hubson hover. It's up and down, it's left and right a little bit. It'll never just stay flat straight. Even on a calm day, I can't get the thing to say to stay where it should do in the sky on a hover. Doesn't really make that much difference, does it, when you're flying it? But it does still drop. So if I fly this around low in sport mode, say I'm maybe flying at 5 metres high, it's going to keep dropping. It's not going to fall to the floor, but it's going to drop. If you fly lower than that, you could have a problem. The same problem the original Xeno had. So let's move on to the main thing about this that's a massive difference. Of course, this thing has a 4K 60 frames per second camera, which is decent, to be fair. But it's okay having a 4K camera. But you've got to match that up with a decent lens and a decent sensor. They're the most important things. If you've got a crap lens on the top of this 4K camera and a nice sensor, you're still not going to get the results. If you've got a really nice lens and a really poor sensor, again, you're not going to get the results. And this is where this thing's let down. To me, you don't get... The image is not... It is 4K, but it's not what I'd expect it to be look like. I'd expect it to be better than it is. It's quite grainy. If you zoom in on the, on the picture, you'll see. And it. it's noise in the picture. So you're going to see that. There's quite a lot of it about. So I'm noticing these things on a 4K monitor. I don't look at them on my TV. When I make these videos and when I check video back, playback, I'll watch it on a 4K monitor. I have certain flights that I keep onto one side on a file and they'll maybe be played back on me on a 65 inch 4k tv but not from the hubson to be fair it's going to be stuff that i've flown with mavic pro 2 pro or the zoom or something else like that so when i've checked this on the monitor that's when i can see the difference now in my opinion the camera on this isn't as good as on the femi x8 se i'll say that now i think it's quite it's not miles better but it's better in the color um, the dynamic range, all that is better on a Femi. Now, when I did the video the other day, someone commented yesterday or today, I can't remember, saying, why didn't I adjust this and why didn't I adjust that before I did the video comparison. When I did that video comparison the other day, they were two out of the box quads. It's straight up, put it on the app, do whatever update needed doing, calibrate the compass and fly it. I did both the same on the Xeno, and the Mavic Mini 2 and if you see if you're saying to me why didn't I do that it could be better in post because 90% of the people that buy these things aren't bothered about post they're not going to produce videos and go to the end degree of trying to make them look the best they can or not going to go mess around with the beginning have you set all this they're going to fly it on auto they're going to get it out of the box and stick it in the air because that's what they want to do these are not professional drones, either of the two drones that I compared to the other day. These aren't the Mavic Pros where you've got to mess around with everything and get it 100% right or you're not going to get it because you're doing 10 bit. These are not that. This or the Mini. They're not designed for that market. They're designed to take it up in the air, fly and capture some decent footage. That's the whole point. And that's why I still... I haven't messed around with this. Maybe I can get it to look really, really nice, but I'm not going to spend hours messing around 
trying to do post on this to make the picture look better well before we go fly i want to set it all up and have a maybe a little test flight and a test over to make sure it looks good i'll do that with a pro and that's because i've probably gone out to some place to shoot that i know i want this good footage from the one inch sensor these don't have that so before you start slagging me off in the video saying yeah but this is this that's just how i feel okay remember i make this video i don't get paid for it i make it for you if you don't want to watch the videos that's fine but I'm giving you my opinion, and it's my opinion only. So don't just hammer in the comments saying, oh, you didn't do this and you didn't do that, and what about this and what about that? I own one and I love it. If you own it and you love it, that's amazing. That's fantastic because that's what it's all about. What I'm saying to people, if you're watching this video and you haven't bought one before, I would tell you not to buy the drone. So the main reason I would tell you not to buy the drone is because there's nowhere near as good as a Mini 2. It isn't. It weighs a stupid amount. It gives me less flight time than the Mini does. The range is about the same. Well, I don't know because I'm no, I wouldn't risk flying that to that range because when I'm flying this, every time I'm flying, I'm thinking this could come down at any time. I could lose signal. Anything could happen. What I can tell you is on the place where I did the test on this the other day and I did the test on the Mini, the Mini far out did it on range. And that could be anything, couldn't it? That could be Wi-Fi interference or anything, but I can tell you the Mini did it on range. The Mini does it on the camera picture and certainly on the fact that this thing flies nowhere near as good as a DJI drone. And yes, I am DJI biased, but they make the best drones. It's a simple fact. At the minute, the only people that are probably anywhere near them is Autel. Everybody else is so far still behind, it's untrue. They make a budget drone now, and that budget drone, to me, kills off this, the Femi XA SE 2020. Unless someone comes along, and I'll do, they don't have to do 250 grams to me, they just have to make a drone in that price point with them features that flies that well. That's the big difference. So if you are thinking about buying one of these for Christmas, I, I would certainly, well, whoa, unless you can get it for the price I paid for it. I bought this purely to do, to have because I wanted to see what it was like, to make some videos on, and then this will, it'll never fly again, I'll be selling this straight off this video virtually. Because I've no wish to keep it. To me, it's nowhere near as good as the things I've got. And I'm never going to fly it again. I'll never put it in the air again. It has got some really nice things about it. The really nice things are, are the display is nice. I'm here. It has a really nice display now when you turn it on. It's better than what it did before when it had just this was blanked out. But when you're flying, how many of you love this display? Because I certainly don't. I look at my phone to get what information I want to do. I never ever dream of looking at the display. But it's really nice to have. Is the controller any better? Yeah, these feel better. But I've had it in bits. Because obviously I've had this one in bits. These still have pots. So they don't have gimbals. Let's not confuse these with gimbals. These have pots. In other words, virtually the same things you have in your Xbox. They've been given a bit more attention. To make them a bit more springy. If this had true gimbals, you'd be able to adjust that tension because you might not like that tension and you'd have more feeling in the sticks. In other words, the sticks haven't got enough move, haven't got enough points in between there. So let's say, for instance, argument's sake, there's on a, on the on this, there might be, let's say it has 200 points. I don't I'm just making these numbers up. And let's say this one has 40 points and that's the kind of difference you're feeling so there seems to be a lot more places i can put this in the air and hold it and get the kind of feel i want than there is to one of these and that's because these things are toy grade very much toy grade and i've had it in bits remember so i do know what it looks like so for the package if this had been a year ago, when this first came out, I actually know the Mini was still out then anyway. So this is 18 months ago and I'd have been reviewing this, I'd have been going, yeah, it's great for the money if it was the price it is today. It probably wouldn't have been so, but it'd have been the price when it came out. And I'd have probably been going, yeah, that's a great, it's great value, but it's still a Hubson. You still get that feeling when you fly in this, and I do, and bearing in mind, if you've watched my channel for a long time, go back and have a look at how many things I've flown, how many things I own. I still fly this with a thing, with the trepidation thinking this could drop out of the sky, this could fly away, because it just can do that. It doesn't always respond as well as it should do to the sticks, because I don't think the radio signal is that good. It might have, it's got lag, so when you might be going to move right a few milliseconds later, it decides it's going to move right. All these things are on there, and in, in, in their entirety, 
they're bad. If you look at them individually, they're just small things. But when you put all that together, it's a reason for me not to buy this drone. So it's very much the case for me is nice try Hubson, but you need to try a lot harder on the Hubson Z03. They've got a plus come out. I've got a two plus. I don't even know what it is. Uh, I've no intention to buy one. I've no, I've no idea what it is. But I certainly wouldn't buy one. But the Hubson Z03 needs to be lighter. They need to get rid of this toy grade controller. Throw it in the bin and start again. Make something better. It needs to be lighter. It needs to have a better either lens. Well, it definitely needs to have a better lens on the camera. It needs to certainly be a lot lighter. They've got the flight time about right. And it needs to have a similar type of range to what it's got. So can you make it 300 grams lighter? Because it doesn't, I'm not saying it needs to be 250. If you get it up to 600, I think more people would be happy with it. Throw the controller in the bin and bring it out the same price point. Because if you bring this out any more expensive, not going to touch it with a barge pole. So if you think I'm being harsh, that's all well and good. I, it's, it's entirely your, up to you, isn't it, what you want to spend your money on. I'm just telling you that I wouldn't buy this. If you think I'm being harsh, probably, possibly I am. But I've reviewed so much, so many of these things, the Xenos and the Femis and all the rest of it. And you're just not going to get to where it wants to be. The favourite question I'm now getting asked is, I want to buy a cheap drone to start with, what can I buy? And then I tell them a drone and they go, I can't afford that. And the drone, I always tell them these are, uh, well, I actually tell them a few things. Parrot and Affy, if you can get it cheap second hand. And you're going to say there's been battery issues. Mm, I never had the problems with them. And I know that certainly a lot of people have said they've got problems. But more people say they haven't. I still like the Anafe. I think it flies really, really nice. And I love the camera on it. You can buy cheap Anafe second hand. You can buy cheap Parrot Bebop 2 second hand. And you can obviously buy the DJI Spark. I've seen a Spark this week for 190 quid with a controller. And two batteries sell on eBay. So there's some bargains to be had out there. So why wouldn't, don't go thinking you have to spend a fortune on a drone, buy something that's in your price point, certainly. But I urge you, don't go spend 120, 130 quid on a drone, these like um, Seafly crap or the Earsheen stuff that's come out. I don't know, EX4 or whatever they are. Absolutely bloody awful, these things. Don't go buy them. Save up a little bit more money or go buy someone second hand. For 120 quid, I can guarantee you'll get a Parrot Bebop 1, which is miles better than any of them. It's still not cutting edge, but it's miles better than any of them. If you want to get something cheap, buy a 20 quid drone and just learn to fly it. Learn to get throttle response right. So there's no in between to me. There's a 20 pound drone and then you've got the next thing up or buy an FPV quad. But I'd certainly start on a 20 quid drone just to get you the feel for how it flies. Don't get something with altitude hold because you want to be able to work the throttle to get used to it. And I would certainly give this type of thing a miss. So... I know a lot of you are going to hate this video, but at the end of the day, I say what I feel. And that's why it's my channel. If you don't like that and you think you feel really strongly about it, go make a video yourself. Defend it. Tell me why it's great. But don't just leave a load of stuff down in the comments and it's like half page long because I'll just delete the comment and I won't read it. I haven't got the time. If you think feel that strongly about this drone and think it's that great, go make a video and tell me why. So, thanks ever so much for watching. Have a fantastic day and don't forget, if you did like the video, give it a thumbs up. But don't forget, please like, share and subscribe. Thanks a lot. Bye bye. Thanks for watching my channel. If you like the video, please subscribe and hit the like button and also hit that notification bell. There's plenty more good stuff coming up.